Hey folks, Mayhem here, and if you're watching this video, you probably want to learn how to drift. Moreover, you probably want to learn how to drift without also having to learn how to drive with a manual transmission. And hopefully you will learn how to do just that in this video. Now, I've recorded a bunch of examples of cars that I've gone through the needle climb and logged different uh, scores with, and I've included that in this video, and I'm just going to kind of talk over the top of it. So, first of all, the most important thing that you can do to learn how to drift is to go into your difficulty settings and then turn traction control off. Traction control is going to prevent you from being able to drift almost completely. So if you've been having difficulty drifting, uh, that's probably a good place to look as far as you know, being the culprit and why you can't drift. Now, once you've done this, you'll notice that it's already a lot easier to drift. Now, I have made this tune for, basically all the cars in this video have the same exact tune, and I'm going to share that at the end of the video. Now, if you don't want to do that, I will also upload this tune for all the cars that you see in this video. So if you can't be bothered to do it, just search uh, my gamer tag. I'll put that on the, you know, it's the same as, you know, the, the beginning, Mayhem Gaming. That is, that's my gamer tag, and you can search for the creator info. You can find the tune that way. Uh, not trying to promote my own tune. That's why I'm also including at the end of the video showing you how to do it yourself if you want to. So another major thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to learn how to push the boundaries as far as uh, being able to go around these curves and get a little bit more sideways than you feel comfortable with. So every bit of a drift zone that you're going straight and you're not uh, not squealing your tires, you're not uh, basically not drifting, you're wasting opportunity for score. I mean that kind of seems like common sense but you really want to be sideways through every bit of the, uh, the drift zone and I wouldn't recommend starting off with a needle climb it's a very technical drift zone and you'll end up having to rewind a lot which will cause you to fail a lot uh, on top of that learning how to drift you'll probably also fly off the corners or it's, it's just not a good drift zone to practice with. Uh, the S-bends on the beginning part of the map, uh, the part of the map that you get when you buy the game, uh, the S-bends is a really good uh, drift zone to learn. It, it kind of simulates the needle climb, but it's less technical and it's a lot shorter. So if you fail, you can just drive back and start over. It doesn't take you you know, a minute and a half, two minutes to get through the drift zone and, you know, you, you're not losing much. So, if you fail, you're not majorly set back. Now, this tune, uh, the reason why I've made this tune is because I've seen another video from a YouTuber that we all know, and he kind of was a little judgy on people who drift an automatic. And... You know, I, I didn't take it as an insult, but I, I kind of felt that I could use this as an opportunity to teach those of you who want to learn how to drift, but don't want to learn how to um, drive in manual transmission. And I'm not being judgy at all, because I prefer to drive with an automatic transmission. So, uh, mainly, you're just going to want to learn the basics you're going to want to learn how to go through these uh, basically half circles and uh, go through like now this part of the needle th this isn't really a half circle this is this is a really technical part and this is part of the reason why I was uh, not suggesting that you start with the needle uh, once you learn how to go through in each each different type of turn what you know what speed what momentum you got to carry through uh, basically it's just a series of micro adjustments to your steering 
uh, tapping on your e-brake or your actual brake. Uh, you don't ever want to brake too much because braking will slow you down which cancels your momentum which basically cripples you from being able to drift properly. Part of drifting is you want to keep as much speed and angle as possible. So if, if you brake too much you're taking away the speed part of it which is going to lower your score and prevent you from being able to get through like like this part right here uh, th that's hard to get through that part and drift all the way around all that a lot of times you'll have to maybe you know turn right or change your angle and then change it back just to uh, be able to continue that drift so it's kind of hard to explain that but you'll you'll know what I'm talking about as you practice more and you will spin out you will do 180s you'll do 360s and that's you know that's part of learning how to drift and we've everybody that learns how to drift has done it now I'm not the best drifter by any means uh, I'm decent at it uh, and I think I'm decent enough to be able to maybe give a little bit of advice to those of you who are still just learning how to do it so basically these these cars have a specific power to weight ratio now I'm not really great at math and I haven't figured that power to weight ratio out exactly but I will tell you with these lighter weight cars uh, between 1700 and 2200 pounds uh, if you stick the 1.6 liter motor which is available for most of these lightweight cars uh, it'll put out about 668 horsepower uh, now I know this doesn't help a lot of you out who uh, who don't use these units of measurement, but that's the reason, part of the reason why I didn't go into too much depth in figuring out the power to weight ratio because uh, I don't know the formula for everybody. So you'll, you'll kind of have to figure out that sweet spot. But uh, this tune can be used for multiple different setups you don't have to just have the 1.6 liter like this RTR Mustang which is really really great at drifting uh, I use the same setup that I use on the four cylinders on this car which is obviously not a four cylinder and I as you'll see at the end of this uh, drift, drift run that uh, I, I did fairly well and you know you wouldn't think this uh, this tune would apply to the higher horsepower vehicles but it does so um, just basically it's it's going to be trial and error and if you want to uh, find these uh, these lighter weight vehicles just go and filter your garage to uh, look at all the different uh, hatchback varieties and then filter it so that you can find the lighter weight ones now when you go to upgrade your car uh, you know this this is obviously pertaining to the lighter weight ones it's this 1.6 liter turbo rally motor right here that I'm talking about uh, really great motor uh, you definitely want to use that one if you have it as an option now you're obviously going to want to go through and do all the engine upgrades uh, max race brakes you know upgrade it as you would normally uh, of course the suspension obviously super important to choose drift um, nothing real crazy uh, you, you want uh, your race tires you want them to be as wide as possible lightest rims as possible uh, wide stance so you want to put them spacers in uh, and you don't have to do aerodynamics but if you do you're going to want to push the front towards cornering and the back towards speed okay so your front tires you want as flat as possible and you want to fill the back ones up as much as possible you want your final drive to be as wide as you can because you don't want to have to shift in the drift zone now you're going to want to push your brakes towards 65 percent towards the front so that when you brake it'll help you to get sideways and the same thing with your rear diff you want it to be at 75 percent that'll also help you as you're accelerating to kick that back end out if you liked anything in the video that you just watched please consider liking and subscribing thank you